Father, I want to thank you and I want to honor you for you are a great and an awesome God. Thank you, Lord, for this word that we can share. And thank you that you make it alive in each one of us. And I pray, Lord, that you will fulfill your message in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. If I have to give this word a title, I'm going to say that hope remains. And I'm going to start with this one in 1 Corinthians 13, verse 13. It's a well-known one. And it says, And now abide faith, hope, love. These three. But the greatest of these is love. I think the New King James says charity. Ne? But we all know it as hope, faith, and love. Those three remains. A lot of translations do use the word as well. They say these remains. So my conclusion to this one is, I want to say that even if everything comes to pass, if everything ends, you will still find that there is faith, that there is hope, and then there is love. These three will always, always remain. Amen. And it says, the greatness of these is love. And so it should be. Because you know what, even the whole chapter 13, if you go back, it is absolutely describing love, what love is and the characteristics of love that you will find. And more importantly, God is love. That's why this is so important that we keep this as the center of every message that we preach, that God is love and in Him is love. And that's why we are here today, because of God's great love. 1 John 4 verse 16 says, And we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love. And he who abides in love abides in God and God in him. Amen. God is absolutely love. So we have heard so many messages and I think there should be much more. If we ever preach, if we ever spread the gospel, let that be the center of it all. Because the whole gospel is founded in love. Because God loves us with an everlasting, unwavering, unchanging, and a steadfast love. Oh, nothing changes God. Amen. And one thing to always remember is that God loves you. Maybe you should say it. God loves me. God Do you believe that? Amen. Say it again. God, God loves me. God loves me. Amen. Amen. And you know, it's not because you have such a sparkling character or a great personality or a good nature or, you, or even because you love Him. No, He loves you because God is love. That is who He is. And that's why we can trust Him. Amen. And Romans 5 verse 8 says, But God demonstrates His own love towards us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So He says, nothing that I did, it's what God did. It's not who I am, it's who God is. 1 John 4 verse 9 says, In this, the love of God was manifested towards us. That God has sent His only begotten Son into the world that we might live through Him. If it was not for God's love, we would have had no hope at all. Because God loves us, He gave us the ultimate price, His Son, to die for us so that we don't have to bear the punishment of death. Now, we said there's three that remains. I'm not going to spend all of this in love, but we can actually. Nay. So the next one is, I also want to talk about faith. Now, this is not quite interesting what I'm going to say. It says say that even when God has this great love for all of us, and even if Christ has paid the ultimate price to reconcile us with God, if you don't believe that, it means nothing to you. Then it is for you as if Christ has never died for you. That's how strong I want to put this. Because if you don't believe in God's love, you cannot experience it at all.
John 3 verse 18 says, He who believes in him is not condemned. So if I believe in Christ, if I believe in the only begotten Son, I am not condemned. But it says, if you do not believe, but he who does not believe is condemned already. Because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. So your belief in this true love of God has got meaning. And if you don't, the word says that you are condemned already. Now maybe we should look again at the definition of faith. The well-known verse in Hebrews 11 verse 1 says, Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Oh, I love this definition. Now, because I believe in the Son of God, my salvation became a reality. It's things I hope for, things I believe. Because I believe that God loves me, I can love God. 1 John 4 verse 19 says, We love Him because He first loved me. That's why I can love the Lord. Because of His love for me. Hebrews 11 verse 6 says, But without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must believe that He is, and that He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. So if you persistently seek the Lord, that actually proves that you do believe that He is. Have you looked at your prayer life, have you looked at your Christian walk? Do you really seek the Lord? Do you really seek His presence? And if you do, that, like I said, it proves actually that I do believe that He is, because that's why I am investing my time in Him. He is a reward of those, eh? And Proverbs 8 verse 7 it says, I love those who love me. And those who seek me diligently will find me. Sometimes we want all these revelations of God, all that. Just seek Him and you will find Him. Now, let's look again at the first part of this definition of faith. It says, now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. Now, we're going to go to the third, the third one, the third of the big three, ne? hope. <laughs> you know, Africa has almost got the big five. It seems like we got the big three. Yeah. <laughs> it says, now, again, I'm going to make a statement. Now, is this correct for me to say that without hope, I have nothing to build my faith on. Look at the first part of Hebrews. Because faith is built on what I hope. So if I have... And without faith, I cannot experience the benefit of God's love. You see how these three are intertwined with each other. How can I benefit of the love of God if I do not believe that? And how can I believe if I have no hope? Because all are intertwined together. Maybe we should look a little bit more in this word of hope. Now, we might find that there are two ways of talking about hope. Two aspects of hope we can say. The common hope for every day. I hope it goes well with you. I hope you had a wonderful birthday, pastors. <laughs> you see, and we use this. And, and, and in that sense... It's almost got the same meaning as, I wish you had a wonderful birthday. And now, the strength of this hope, if I use it in that context, is actually in my desire. So if I truly say that I wish you have a wonderful birthday, hope always invokes action. So if I really hope you to have a wonderful birthday, I must do something about that. It cannot just be a wish. You know what? Wishing is... 
good and bad. Of course, you know what, uh, sometimes my parents say, you know, you're wishing the one hand. No, don't go there. Okay, so. <laughs> but sometimes a wish is something that you have a desire for, but you know deep inside your heart it's not really going to happen. So for argument's sake, I wish for world peace. We all know where the world is steering to, and what's the possibility of this happening right now, especially in this end times? You see, wish is not always good. But then also, hope should evoke action. So now we have this hope, but then there's also hope of the Bible. What does the Bible say? What does the hope in the Bible really mean? It says, hope is the confident expectation of what God has promised and its strength is in His faithfulness. Hope in the Bible is because I have an expectation in God's promises. Because God said it, because God promised it, I now have hope. And that hope has got meaning. Amen? Now whatever God has promised in His Word, you can anchor your hope in that. Whatever He's promising is already happening. If you look at every promise in the Word of God, even when He said Jesus Christ is returning, that is busy happening. Because that's the reality of God's Word. If God said it, I always say that settles it. It is true and it is always. Now, looking at these three as well, I want to read us the most well-known verse in the Bible. And that is in John 3.16. Now that actually ties together love, faith and hope in one verse as well. In this great promise of God. It says in the first part, it says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Remember what we earlier meant as well. Because He loves me, He gave us His Son in my place. Because of His great love. And then comes faith. And they say, whoever believes in Him. So if you believe in Him, it shall come to pass. And the, what shall come to pass? My hope is that he who believes in him shall not perish, but have eter everlasting life. Is that not hope to have in the Bible? Are you still hoping for your everlasting life? The moment that I gave my heart to the Lord, I knew for a fact that I started my everlasting life right there. Because that's when I got born again. That's when my everlasting life started. And I will live forevermore because of His promises. Because of what He said. Because of what Christ has done for me. And in me. I will not perish. I have eternal life. Now... Paul also had this confident expectation, this hope in God's promise. And as well, we should have it as well. And that brought in forth, that brought forth action. Put that nicely. It's in my English. And I'm going to read this in Philippians 1 verse 20. It says, According to my earnest expectation and my hope, that in nothing... I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness, as always, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. So what is the action part of this? He says, I will magnify Christ. In my everyday living, even in my death, I should magnify Him. I knew, uh, what's it, the, the head of the Pentecostal, of the Protestant Pentecostal Church. 
Pia, pia, ka. <laughs> um, Peter, now this man, I was fortunate enough to, uh, to attend his funeral service. And what I found amazing with that is that during his funeral service, although it was supposed to be a time of mourning, everybody that assembled that day rejoiced in the Lord because of that man. Because of what he did and the testimony and the way. And most of them in that building got to know the Lord through him. And got everlasting life. And that should be our testimony as well. Even when we die, people should know that this man made a difference because he testified to Jesus Christ. And because of that person, I met the Lord. And I accepted him. So let that be our legacy even going forward. Even if I die that I should still magnify Christ. And in my living, whatever I do, let that magnify Christ. And that is a testimony of what we have in our daily lives. What is your hope? And what is your action on that one as well? So, if I believe with my earnest expectation that I shall magnify Christ, let us do that with honor. And Paul even went further. He says in verse 21, he says, For me to live is Christ. That means whatever I do today, I do it on behalf of Christ. I do it for Christ. I do it because of Christ. And you know what? Even if I die, this is still gain for me because then I'm with Christ. So now your question is, why should we be afraid to spread this gospel, this wonderful message because of persecution? No, because my life should testify to Christ. And even if I die... It should even still magnify Christ. Because if I die because of Christ, wow, what a testimony to the world as well. That's why even with the earlier church, when they were per persecuted, a lot of people still came to the Lord because of the testimony that they still held on, even during persecution. And that still saved a lot of people's lives. So my question may be, are you willing to die? For what you believe in. Are you willing to die for the gospel of Jesus Christ? That one you have to make out for yourself before you even take on this path. Do you have hope this morning? Do you come across times that you say, is there any hope? Then I would say, go back to the word of God. Look at God's promises. What did he promise and what are you doing about that? My salvation is in Christ. Because I accepted him, I know I am saved. So I have victory, I have salvation. I have everlasting life in Christ. Do you have hope in your everlasting life that already started? Do not lose faith in this. And even the promise of God said that I am healed. And we read that in Isaiah 53 verse 5. He says, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. There's even hope in sickness. Because we have a promise of God said that we are healed in Jesus Christ. I am not alone ever. Because God is with me. And that is also a promise of God. Hebrews 13 verse 5 says, Let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave you, nor forsake you. There's always hope, because God never, ever, ever leaves me. And you know what? One of the, also the biggest promises I held on to, is that Jesus is coming back. Jesus is returning, and that will be soon. Mark my words. <laughs> Mark God's words because he said he is coming back. And I want to read this to us again. In 1 Thessalonians 4 from verse 16 to 18. It says, For the Lord himself will descend from heaven 
with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. Amen. There's always hope. Because if we anchor our hope in God's word, it will never fail you. Love, faith, and hope. But I want to ask you today what will your hope do today you know what hope should bring us in action because we hope that's why we do that's why we have a reason to go on what are you hoping for is your hope based on the word of God amen, amen. praise the Lord Let's just pray together. Father, in this morning we want to honor you again, Lord, because of your faithfulness, because of who you are, Lord. We want to humble ourselves, Lord, in front of you and say, Lord, we submit to you. And we have this great hope in you, Lord. And I ask you, Lord, that you will speak to each one individually this morning so that we can go forth and act on your word. Act in hope, Lord, because we know what your promises are. And Lord, that you will reveal every part of your word to us so that we can build up hope, remain faithful, and remain in your love. It's my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.